some of the prominent symptoms, all of these you don't have to write. Some of the most common symptoms that you have to talk about is underweight, protruding belly. What is the meaning of protruding belly? The stomach, stomach is the abdominal region is swollen at all times. But uh, does that mean health? No, that does not mean health because the hands and the skin are rickety. The hands and the skin, are the, the legs, these are all rickety and dry. That's why. So we would say underweight and belly protruding. That is the prominent symptom. See there, you should be writing this. Next is stunted growth. Stunted growth. What is the meaning of? Stunted growth. No, not slow growth. Stunted. Inadequate. Growth is inadequate as per age. Whenever we talk about growth is inadequate as per age, and along with that, we are talking about protruding belly and then the hands and the legs, very, very thin and rickety. These are all symptoms of this. Uh, then again, we are talking about enlarged liver. Take this, very important symptom. Enlarged liver and anemia. Enlarged liver, liver has, uh, no, all body organs have a definite size. Enlarged liver and anemia. What is the meaning of anemia? No. Excessive deficiency of RBCs. Excessive deficiency of RBC. So these people who have got a major deficiency of RBC, uh, hemoglobin, they will always be weaker. No energy. Very, very weak that way. And the, and the last symptom, these four symptoms are important for you to remember. The fourth symptom again, take their edema. What is edema? Edema means swelling of the body parts. Swelling of the body parts. Sometimes the face may be swollen and some... Uh, and the swelling is not regular, irregular swelling, sometimes the hands, sometimes the fingers. So swelling is a specific characteristic. Come to the next one. We talk about marasmus. Find out the differences now. Marasmus, when we are talking about, it may be because of the deficiency of all the three major nutrients, carbohydrate, proteins majorly, and also on fats. But for caution, for what we said, major only protein is protein deficiency. Basically, whenever somebody suffers from protein deficiency, even in normal people like us, massive protein deficiency, but there's a swelling of the body is common. Swelling of the body is a major symptom. So now we are talking about with reference to this. Now, next is malaria. So what is the age group that you're going to write? Infants, majorly. Uh -huh, infants, young infants. So this is what we are talking about is malaria. So whenever you are asked to write on the differences, age group mentioned karna hai. Because of what type of a deficiency, this is another very important point that you have to write. Now, let us talk about symptoms. Again, I said all of these you need not remember. Some of the most common, which is some of the most common, less body weight, that is a common symptom always you should write. Then, next is we talk about the skin becomes folded. Wrinkling of the skin is a major symptom. Wrinkling of the skin. The skin becomes folded. What again? Retarded physical and mental growth. In this case, it is not only retarded physical growth, like washaker, it is retarded mental growth also. The mental maturity is not as per age. Mental maturity is much lesser. And the ribs appear uh, uh, prominent. The ribs, uh, which is also known as the Fijian chest, ribs are prominent. That is skinny. And uh, the fleshy part is almost absent. And uh, when we are talking about otherwise small children are supposed to be quite uh, chubby and healthy and fleshy. But that concept is yeah, not seen or that characteristic property is not seen in these type of children actually because of the massive deficiency that we talk about. After this, we are going to learn two major terms here. Now that we try understanding some different types of nutrients. After this, we are going to term macronutrient and micronutrient. This also you are asked as defini definition at times. Uh, macronutrient and micronutrient. What is the difference between these two terms? Macronutrient, what is the meaning? Nutrient which is required in large amounts for the process of growth. Micronutrient which are required in trace amount, small amount. Now I may talk about micronutrient and macronutrient. Uh, we say the major three nutrients that we are talking about, carbohydrate, protein, and fats, which are required something around 200 grams, 100 grams for meal. 100 grams is quite a big amount, no? 100 grams, 150 grams, that way. 
But if I talk about how much of the zinc is necessary, how much of the sodium is necessary, how much of the chlorides are necessary, it trace amounts. Much lesser than one milligram, much lesser than one milligram in most of the cases. So that's why we say these are majorly micronutrients. These are majorly micronutrients. But overall, if I talk about minerals, there also we may categorize. Some minerals require a larger amount and some require a smaller amount. So first of all, I said carbohydrate, fat, the macronutrient heavy as compared to minerals. Minerals are always requiring lesser amount. But now to talk about the minerals also, all of them are not necessary that they should be required the same amount, some more, some less. So ones which are requiring more amount, macro. The ones which are requiring lesser amount, micro. You will not write down the table, nothing you need to write there. Just underline some of the important terms that I tell you. Follow the table. From the table only you will uh, read and just underline some important terms and I will explain you some of the important concepts so that when you study it becomes easier. Refer to the table that you have in your volume or in your textbook. Now, all of you have the textbook or the volume, no? Now, next is we start with the minerals, the mineral salts. Any concept, if it is not understood, please raise questions. Now that we are talking about mineral salts, we first of all start with macro, macronutrient. Macronutrient, what is the first one that we are talking about? Some of the most common ones are calcium, sodium. Calcium, sodium, potassium, these are the most common ones, which always should be there in our blood in adequate times, in adequate amount. So now that we are talking about calcium, Calcium. Now, it is sources of food here. If I talk about some of them, say suppose calcium, we always understand calcium is present in milk and milk products. Calcium is a good, or milk is a good source of calcium. But these food sources, you may just uh, go through some of them. Overlapping food sources also are there because I cannot talk about that milk is having only calcium. Is it so? No, milk is having so many other different nutrients also. If I talk about the green vegetables, is it having only one type of a mineral? No, so many other different types of minerals it has. So food sources that you call them here, they may have overlapping items. So that's nothing to worry about. So now that we are talking about calcium, functions kya hai? What are some of the prominent functions of calcium? Calcium is always a component. Calcium is always necessary for the formation of the bone and the teeth. Calcium always necessary for formation of the bone and the teeth. Deficiency of calcium agar hoga, then obviously to understand that there will be some bone disorders or tooth anomaly, some tooth decay may very well happen. Rickets, underline that word. Rickets, what is the meaning of that word? Um, uh, rickets, children basically show this uh, symptom, rickets, that the bones are not well formed. Sometimes the bones may be curved, especially if I talk about the leg bones, they may be curved. The bones of the hands, ribs may not be well formed. If that is the situation, we talk about rickets. Uh, Come to the second, sodium. Major function, acid-base equilibrium. What do you understand by this acid-base equilibrium? Acid-base equilibrium means maintaining the composition of the blood properly. Sodium chloride, as your composition here, our blood, which is a body fluid, the major body fluid that we have, the blood has got adequate amount of sodium salts, chlorides. So adequate amount of sodium and chloride is not going in our blood. Then what will happen? Are you aware? If the blood does not have adequate amount of sodium and chlorides in the blood, do we uh, have the nervous. the nervous tissues will get affected majorly. Adequate amount of sodium and potassium is very much necessary for the functioning of our nerve, functioning of our brain. Come to potassium. Potassium. Again, we are talking about nerve or associated with the nerve. Nerve and muscle activity, fluid balance. Here you've come across one new word. Neurotransmitter. What are neurotransmitters? These new words, you may write down the meaning as I describe. Neurotransmitters. What are neurotransmitters? Underline that word. Neurotransmitters are chemical substances released by the neurons. Chemical substances, neurotransmitters, what are these? Chemical substances released by neurons, which are very much like the nerve functioning. So neurotransmitters, 
function of potassium, you have to understand formation of the neurotransmitters, muscle activity. And if there's a deficiency of the potassium, then what will the person suffer from? Again, improper coordination. You understand what I, am, what I mean by saying improper coordination? Improper coordination. Can you give me one example? Am I talking about mental retardation here? Improper coordination. Am I talking about mental retardation? No, not that. I'm not, not talking not about... Fast action. Yes? Not fast action. Not fast action. Quite a number of times. The coordination may not be proper. Quite a number of times you come across some elderly people also. Elderly people generally are uh, absent-minded. And the way you hold the things may fall quite often. The grip is not correct. So here we have, when I talk about improper muscular activity, holding things, remembering things, no writing, proper writing, uh, proper coordinating speech, all this may get impaired because of deficiency of sodium and potassium. Is it age-related? Mostly. It is mostly age-related, but of course, in certain cases, it may happen early also. Now we talk about phosphorus. Function, can I underline these words? ATP, you are already active. You know? ATP, you are already active. So similar to ATP in our body, in our cell, there are so many other energy molecules. ATP is energy currency, you know? energy molecule. Released by? Released by? Released by which organism? Ah, mitochondria. So now that way, when I talk about the ATP, which is the energy currency, NADP is also something like that. NADP is also another type of a energy molecule which helps in various functions, respiration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have to understand ATP, NADP, these are energy molecules. What is air is written there? Phosphorus is also necessary for the animal formation. You know which part of the teeth is animal? Yes. The white part that you get. Uh, so the white part that you get to see. Animal. Now, if there's a phosphorus deficiency, quite often you will come across in people also, uh, the yellowing of the teeth happens. The yellowing of the teeth. That is because of the major deficiency of phosphorus. Then, uh, other than that, if I talk about the teeth and the bone, teeth and the bone, are they the same thing? No. Teeth is just a deposit of calcium phosphorus and bone is a specific characteristic and arrangement of cells, no? Magnesium. What does it do? Synthesis of enzyme. Underline that. That is what we should specifically write. Synthesis of enzymes. So synthesis of enzyme. Also, organelle synthesis of enzymes is associated with which organelle synthesis of enzyme in the cell? Gene. Gene. So now that I'm talking about the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi apparatus is necessary or is involved in the synthesis of so many enzymes, provided we have this particular nutrient in adequate amount in our cell. Sulfur. Sulfur. When I talk about sulfur, major component of enzymes. See here, I already talked about proteins containing sulfur. I mentioned that protein, some of the proteins have Apart from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, they have got sulfur. Majority of the enzymes, do you know what are enzymes? Do you know what are enzymes? If I talk about this word enzymes, you must have heard of course. What are enzymes? You know what are enzymes? You must have heard no enzymes. Where uh, enzymes are there in our body? Okay. Digestive system, stomach may. And what are these enzymes doing? Breaking down this complex food into simpler form. So these enzymes are majorly proteins. And proteins may also contain sulfur. So that is the relation that you have to understand. That if I understand that the sulfur may contain or the proteins may contain sulfur, then that's the reason if sulfur is not there adequate in our body, so many other enzymes also may not be formed. But at the same time, if somebody has got a massive deficiency of Sulfur, that person always may have some skin problems. Skin problems. That person may always have a variety of different types of skin rashes, irregular pigmentation, etc. etc. Skin associated problem. Chlorine, quite similar like sodium again. When I talk about the blood, the liquid part of the blood is known as, you remember, plasma. Plasma, plasma has majority of proteins and salts, and the most common salts are sodium and chlorides. 
So sodium already we studied. What is the function of sodium? Sodium is very much necessary for the functioning of the nerves, brain. So also chloride. So also chlorine. So chlorine is also very much necessary. So chlorine and sodium made it from where do we get? Salt. Made it from salt. So here you say if there is a deficiency of chlorine, major deficiency as a hoga, then we would suffer from muscular cramps. Do you ever come across muscular cramps? Do you know what are muscular cramps? Yes. Say suppose you are running or walking for long distances. You have been walking, walking or running or some other sport you are playing. Suddenly the muscle becomes stiff. It faints. Otherwise, when smoothly you are walking, contraction followed by relaxation. Now, contraction and relaxation is happening simultaneously. But when too much of these ions are used up, a by contraction hai. after that, immediately they don't relax. And if that does not relax for a few minutes, that is what is known as muscular cramps, which results in pain. And that majorly happens with the cuff muscles of the legs. No, the cuff muscle that we have in the legs that generally shows the process of cramping much. So this is about the macronutrient. Micronutrient, the most common, these are some of the uh, most common ones, iron. Now that I talk about the iron as one of the most common or most important micronutrients in our body, though it is necessary in trace amounts, we should have it in any clear amount. Uh, what is it basically meant for? It is basically meant for the synthesis of hemoglobin in the RBC. It is basically meant for synthesis. What is hemoglobin? Red the red color pigment that is there in the RBCs. The red color of the blood is because of hemoglobin. The red color of the hemoglobin, the red color of the blood is because of the hemoglobin that we have. So if the iron deficiency is there, hemoglobin deficiency is there, then what will the person suffer from anemia? The person also will suffer from massive anemia. So here you come across anemia. Cobalt, cobalt, not a very, uh, when we are talking about cobalt, uh, we require in very, very small amounts, much lesser than iron. But still, if we don't have that small amount of nutrient also, we may start having a problem in our body known as pernicious anemia, where the RBC shape also may change a little bit. And you know, if the RBC shape changes, what is the main role of RBC in our body? Carrying the oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. That is its job. RBCs. RBC has got the hemoglobin inside. And from the lungs, as we take in air, as we breathe in, we are breathing in oxygen. We are taking in air. Air has got a large part of oxygen. And that oxygen from our lungs is carried by the RBC to our tissue. RBC is acting as a vehicle. The RBC takes the oxygen from our lungs to tissues, from the different muscles and the organs, and from the organs it brings what? Carbon dioxide. So if a person is having deficiency of cobalt and the structure of the RBC is disturbed, RBC structure is disturbed, is the oxygen deficiency, is the oxygen carrying capacity disturbed also? Yes. If the oxygen carrying capacity is disturbed, then the individual cells and tissues will also suffer from lack of energy and other different ailments. We talk about copper. Copper again may be associated, copper again is associated slightly uh, with anemia because when we are talking about copper, copper is essential, copper is very much necessary for the cell oxidation. Underline that it is again essential for cell oxidation and melanin production. Melanin is what? Skin, skin, skin pigment, the brown color pigment. Where else we have for this melanin? In the sky, in the eye, the iris of the eye. So when we are talking about in the iris of the eye, we have got the skin. This has got the specific type of a protein in and this is known as melanin there. But deficiency of uh, this type of melanin, deficiency of this pigment would lead to what? Did you ever come across some people do have irregular uh, distribution of the pigment all over the body? Again, that means uh, vitiligo. Irregular albinism is not regular. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 I said irregular, yes, vitiligo, you can see. So now that is about copper. 
Now we talk about zinc. Okay, cell oxidation. Underline the word. What is the meaning of cell oxid oxidation? Simple concept to remember right now. Cell oxidation means every cell has got. We were talking about glucose just now, and I said that the, every cell will be having got this glucose. And now that they get oxygen with the help of oxygen, what are they going to release? They are going to release carbon dioxide. They are going to release water, and they are going to release a whole lot of energy. So now that we are talking about this particular process, this is what is known as cellular oxidation. Underline the chemical breakdown of glucose. Only that much you should understand. Breakdown of glucose. That is what is known as cellular oxidation. Breakdown of glucose. We move on to zinc. Zinc is again necessary for synthesis of enzymes. And underline here, zinc has a deficiency. Deficiency of zinc and sulfur is always associated with skin problems. And now we are also talking about deficiency, massive deficiency of zinc may also be this, uh, related with albinism, underline the word, albinism. Just now we were talking about leucodoma and albinism. What is the difference you have learned? Albinism is a genetic problem. It's a genetic problem. If the cause is unknown, all over the body, there is no melanin production at all from the iris of the eye to the skin, to the eyebrows, to the eyelashes, to the hair, everywhere. The complete deficiency of the melanin. And this also may be associated, but of course it is inborn, uh, but of course it may be associated with the deficiency of such type of nutrients. Iodine on the line, that's very good. In this uh, table, iron, iodine, take that. When you read, of course, this you should know. These are those type of nutrients on these questions of full will come. ID, when we are talking about ID, from where do we get ID? Of course, Got when it. we talk about salt, but apart from salt, we uh, also understand that we people here in the coastal areas, we also take in ID from a whole lot of green vegetables and green leaves that we consume, the seafood that we may be consuming. Uh, but that's the reason whenever we are talking about People away from the coastal regions, they always have a deficiency of ID. More common a deficiency of ID is more common in hilly areas. Common in hilly areas, correct. So that's why I said in the coastal areas, major, major you will not come across people suffer, suffering from ID deficiency. Now, ID is related with what? Formation of a hormone. What is that hormone called? Underlying thyroxine. Thyroxine from the thyroid gland. Where is the thyroid gland located in the neck region? So, jinke body may iodine ka deficiency hoga, this thyroid gland will start swelling up. Individual cells are getting swelled up. And now that individual cells are swollen, what happens? The entire gland looks protruding out. You know, the lower neck part looks protruding out. So, that is a major condition that we come across. What is the disease condition known as abnormal condition? Goita, underline that word, goita. That disease condition is known as goita, ID. Fluorine, when we are talking about fluorine, the word fluorine always you must have come across in your toothpaste. No, fluorine and the toothpaste, that will always be understand. Any good uh, quantity of fluorine should always be there in a toothpaste. Not too much, of course, is good enough. So that's the reason we are always advised to brush our teeth twice, but four times, is it good? Four times would rather bring about a lot of decay in our tooth because too much of fluorine can always bring about tooth decay rather. So fluorine always to understand is very much necessary for the formation or uh, the maintenance of the tooth animal rather. Not formation, but maintenance. And if there's a deficiency, that may lead to dental decay. Overuse also may lead to dental decay. Manganese. Nitrogen metabolism, underline nitrogen metabolism, bone development. What to understand by that word nitrogen metabolism? Utilization of nitrogen. Something like if I talk about uh, now that we eat some plant food, plant food is always rich in nitrogen. Now we are consuming some plant food, a vegetable, a crop, some green leaves we consume. But our body should be able to convert that form of nitrogen to some forms, which is necessary in the formation of the hemoglobin, which is necessary in the formation of the melanin. So if this process in our body mein nahi ho sakta, then that nitrogen or the nitrates jo, which has entered our body in the form of the plant food is just a waste of it. So when I talk about nitrogen metabolism, the simplest concept to understand here is what is nitrogen metabolism? 
utilization. The utilization of the nit nitrogen that we take in our body, and we basically take in nitrogen by the way of the plant food. We basically take in nitrogen by the way of the plant food, but that should be utilized, absorbed, that should go into our blood, that should go into our cells. That is called utilization. The last one, molybdenum. Molybdenum again is associated with nitrate assimilation. What is the meaning of assimilation? Distribution. Distribution. Nitrate distribution. And if it does not happen, if it is not there in a good amount, this may happen in slight retardation. Retardation means not proper growth that we are talking about. Next is for the vitamins and their types. Now, uh, whose phone is making that weird sound? Nobody seems to know anything. Never mind. Now, when we are talking about the vitamins, vitamins, what are these? Vitamins, again, majorly, maybe amines. When we are talking about amines, they are a simpler form of proteins, we say. And again, made up of carbon, hydrogen, quite a number of them. But they may, they may not be that complex when we are talking about, the, they may not be uh, complex. So when we are talking about, I'm sorry, when we are talking about vitamins, I said these are inorganic in nature. And these vitamins, again, can be categorized as water-soluble and fat-soluble. Two types of vitamins that we understand, water-soluble and fat-soluble. So let us look into those two types of vitamins. Now, here in this table that, again, we try to understand, you have to remember some names of this vitamin and their deficiency diseases. Symptom is not necessary for you right now. The names and the deficiency diseases is something that you have to understand. We start with the first type of vitamins. The first type is yeah. vitamin A. Underline the name, retinol. Vitamin A, retinol. Vitamin A, retinol. So now that we are talking about retinol, Retinol, when we look into it, this is basically the type of the vitamin necessary with the formation of uh, the eye pigment. We have got specialized type of cells in our retina, and hence the name of the uh, or uh, hence the name of that pigment also rhodopsin. So when we are talking about the retina, that's just a layer of our eyeball, and that layer of our eyeball has got specific cells, rods. There are other types also. So when we are talking about these rods, they are essential in releasing a type of a pigment known as rhodopsin. For that rhodopsin, we should have always a different amount of vitamin A in our blood. Then how will we get the vitamin A in our blood? We will get vitamin A by consuming variety of fruits and vegetables, which are colored, colored fruits and vegetables. So we can really believe that whenever we are talking about the yellow or the orange colored fruits, vegetables, Great source of vitamin A, retinol. What's the full form? There? What is the uh, biological name there? Retinol. You have to remember that. What is it necessary for production of rhodopsin? If there's a deficiency, then what? If there's a deficiency, the person may suffer from night blindness. Night blindness. What, is the what, is, what is the symptom there? Night blindness. What are we talking about? Night blindness as if there's an inadequate intensity of light. The person is not able to see sharp and clear. Are you talking about only night vision? No, we are not talking about night vision exactly. Night blindness here means if the intensity of light is dim, in dim light, the person cannot see any object sharp. The person cannot see the correct size, sharpness, and the distance of the object. So that is the major problem that these people would have. Vitamin A deficiency. Come to the next word, xeropthalmia. The first one we were talking about, night blindness. The second we said, xeropthalmia. Xeropthalmia is a condition, again, associated with the extreme dryness of the eyelids. For all of you, for all of us, we don't even notice how many number of times we blink. We don't even, we are not even aware how many number of times we are blinking. Because the process is so smooth. So when we are talking about blinking, we don't understand how many number of times we blink because the process is smooth and then there are some glands also on the margins of the eye, on the margins of the eyelids, which are constantly releasing certain secretions. So overall, if we have a little amount of this vitamin, 
and the secretions of the glands in the process of blinking. So when we are talking about that xerophthalmia, dryness of the cornea, dryness of the corner and the word cornea. Cornea is the outermost layer of the eyeball. It is the outermost layer of the eyeball. So now, if we are talking about the margins of the eyelids do not have those glands, on top of that, there's a deficiency of this vitamin. The process of blinking, when we talk about that the eyelids are just moving over the cornea, the entire process becomes very painful. The entire process becomes very painful. Other than that, it is such a simple, smooth process to understand. So, xerophthalmia, you have to remember two major conditions you are asked to remember in this uh, for this particular deficiency. The second that we talk about vitamin D, underline the word calcifero. Vitamin D, calcifero. Majorly helping in what? Go growth of the bones. Growth of the bones. Rickets and osteomalacia. When we are talking about rickets, majorly in children. Osteomalacia, there are some other related also when we are talking about osteoarthritis and all this. Osteomalacia is majorly in adults. Sometimes you are also asked to write down differences, rickets and osteomalacia. Similarity is one that what type of vitamin are you making them to? They don't have similarity over here. But differences, what are you supposed to write? One is children and adults, and the symptoms are also different. If I talk about osteomalacia, the person would generally have painful joints. Painful joints, movement is difficult. And if I'm talking about rickets, rickets would be, would be what? Improper growth of the bones of the limbs, majorly. Improper growth of the bones of the ribs. So rickets is majorly in the children where the rib bones, the limb bones are not developing properly. So that there's a difference in the symptom. E, vitamin E now. We move into vitamin E, the next category. Tocopherol. Vitamin E, tocopherol. We say vitamin E, even in mammals or even in humans, is associated with sterility, deficiency of the hair that is relating to sterility. Underline the word. What is the meaning of sterility? Sterility means, now that I talk about the rats here, in your book it's mentioned about the rats or the mammals, but it's happening even for human. If there's a deficiency of this vitamin, the person may have the reproductive organs, but the process of formation of the reproductive cells may not happen. So that is what we are talking about, infertility or sterility. So what is the meaning of sterility? The mammal or the human, that is also applicable for human, improper development of reproductive cells, even though the reproductive organs are there. So tocopherol prevents oxidation. So what is the function you are writing? Oxidation of vitamin A. What is the meaning of oxidation? Breakdown and utilization of vitamin A, not possible in the body. Vitamin E and vitamin A both should be there in our body for proper functioning. Final we know we are talking about vitamin K. Vitamin K, again, is very much necessary for bones healing. Vitamin K, very much necessary for bones healing. Say, suppose, whenever we suffer from a cut, an injury, which process is happening in our body? We are talking about the clotting of the blood. And for the process of clotting, vitamin K is very much necessary also. So here we are talking about, see here, need, needed in normal clotting of the blood. Do you know what is the duration? What happened there? What is the duration of the clotting of the blood? Avoid huh? Phone. Yes. Kisi ka phone Now, when we are talking about clotting of the blood, clotting of the blood, uh, say suppose if there's a cut, or say suppose we go for a blood test, how long should the process of blood losing stop? Just in few seconds it should stop. Within how long should the process of blood clotting stop? Within few seconds. I'm not much bothered about what you all are doing. I'm just here for a day. If you are able to learn in this two hours, good for you. Now, when we are talking about uh, when we are talking about the process of blood clotting, what I say, uh, process of blood clotting that should happen just in few seconds. 
And if it does not happen, what are we understanding? Profuse loss of blood may lead to? No, that is a condition. That's a disease when people uh, show profuse loss of blood. But say suppose under normal condition, also if a person is not suffering from hemophilia, but there is profuse loss of blood, maybe just a black test, and so much of blood is still coming out for the last two minutes, the person will start feeling weak. The person will start feeling drowsy, weak, because so much of the loss, so, uh, the salts are running out, proteins are running out from the body, no? So the process of clotting should happen just in few seconds, even when you are suffering from a cut, bone, etc. So here we are talking about normal clotting of the blood. Come to the next category. Uh, the first one that we talk about, vitamin B, and in this category, we are also to talk about vitamin C. Now, these are water-soluble vitamins. What did we learn so far? We were talking about vitamin A, B, E, and K. So that all falls under one category, the fat-soluble ones. Now we talk about the vitamin B, which is itself a bigger category known as vitamin B complex. Vitamin B itself is a bigger category of vitamins. So many different subtypes are there. What are some of the most common subtypes we are going to talk about? B1, thiamine. Associated with this, you are just to remember one function, one or two functions are the deficiency disease major. That is what you are majorly asked in your exam. Deficiency disease and the function, the concept you have to understand. Vitamin B1, when we talk about thymine, see here, it helps in digestion and functioning of the nerves. That is what you are supposed to write, underline. Functioning of the nerves, that is the major part that you have to write. It also helps in digestion, but functioning of the nerves, the major thing. We talk about very, very. What is the major deficiency that a person suffers from? And what would be the major symptom that the person shows? Very, very. The person would generally show symptoms like improper maturation of the nerves. And if the nerves are not very mature and functional, the person will always have coordination problems. See here, degenerative changes in the nerves and muscle becomes weak. The muscles and nerves are not properly formed. Muscles, nerves, not properly formed. Come to the next one, B2. What is written there, B2? Riboflavin. Riboflavin. This sources, you'll have to just go through as I'm not talking about the sources. Oxidation of food. Now you know what is oxidation of food. This word already two, two three times we have discussed about this. So oxidation of food, what do you understand? Breaking, Breaking down of uh, glucose. Breaking down of glucose. So oxidation of food twice, twice we have already come across. Oxidation of food means breaking down of the glucose in the body cells. To release what? Energy, to release energy. So breakdown of the food is always to happen in our muscle cells, in our body cells, to release energy. And now that we are talking about the third one, B3, when we are talking about B3, the niacin. Again, look into some sources. I'm going to at least do those source, overlapping sources, be hoga, there's nothing to worry, but at least one or two sources that you can remember. Healthy development of the skin and nervous system. Healthy development of the skin and nervous system. Underline the word pallagra. Pallagra. Pallagra major condition is whenever we are talking about the niacin, niacin deficiency always relates to skin problems. Inflammation, excessive irritation, redness. These are some of the prominent symptoms that this uh, disease brings along. You must have sometime or the other experienced some small rashes and if it is itchy, so, so disturbing it is. No? Small rashes and if it is itchy, so disturbing. And these are massive ones. Big rashes will be there, some boils may be there and it may be massively itchy also. Pentothenic acid. Remember, what does skin lesions? Skin lesions, skin lesions when again, big rashes may be there. And then redness will be there, that one particular region, you know, small, small pimple like structures may be there. Lesions means deformities. When we are talking about uh, some improper structures that is getting formed there. Along with that, diarrhea, uh, little bit of memory loss, these are there. Diarrhea will always, if diarrhea is a symptom, little bit of memory loss always happens because loss of salts happen whenever people suffer from diarrhea, cholera. That is always a common related symptom. We go to B5. 
What is it called? Pentothenic acid. Pentothenic acid. Again, pentothenic acid, again, basically uh, symptoms are skin lesions uh, and then rashes. Pyridoxin, this is important. Now, in this group, I'm talking about underline some of, or tick some of the ones which are very important for you to read from an exam point of view. B1, B2. I talk about now B6, pyridoxin. Pyridoxin. It is associated with synthesis of hemoglobin. Which mineral element you have come across synthesis of hemoglobin? Which mineral element you have come across synthesis of hemoglobin? Give your full name. Yes. I hope. Yes, I don't have full Okay. Now, when we are talking about, if I get it, I, I will give it, and you will get it at the end of the session. Uh, I don't have full Okay, never mind. My parents are not here. That is your uh, problem. Now, when we are talking about this, what I said, we were talking about pyridoxine. What I said, synthesis of hemoglobin, which mineral element is associated with synthesis of hemoglobin? Here, now the vitamin that we are talking about, which vitamin is associated with synthesis of hemoglobin? You have to remember synthesis of hemoglobin, which mineral element? Which vitamin? So now that we are talking about synthesis of hemoglobin, B6 pyridoxine associated with hemoglobin formation again. Associated with formation of hemoglobin again. Then if there is synthesis of or deficiency of hemoglobin, which disorder, you know that already, anemia. which disorder, anemia. Folic acid, take this. Folic acid. Now, folic acid, when we are talking about, we are the folic acid always, not only uh, in certain age groups, every time we should be always uh, concentrating that adequate amount of folic acid adequate amount of iron, adequate amount of B1 should be there in our body. But especially when we are talking about folic acid, folic acid should be present in individuals in the growing stages quite a lot. Uh, when we are talking about even in the elderly ages, folic acid should be there in adequate amount. Folic acid is B9. 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 Check that it is there in your book. B9. B12, we talk about cobalamin. B12 is a very, very essential vitamin. Uh, uh, B12 is a very, very essential vitamin for the synthesis of certain type of production of certain type of cells in our body. Which cells are we talking about? The platelets. Platelets. And what would be happening in our body if there's a deficiency of platelets? Uh, process no. of clotting will be very slow. That's not we were talking about a little bit of clotting. So now, cobalamin, I said, vitamin B12, very much essential for the formation of uh, red blood cells and also platelets for the process of formation of platelets. Severe de uh, deficiency may lead to underlying pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia. Pernicious anemia, where again we are talking about a characteristic structural form of the RBC, which allows lesser amount of oxygen transport. So that is a structural defect of the RBC that happens. And of course, that person will have anemia. That is what the major symptom that you should write. Vitamin C, now that is quite common. Now all these names, all these names you'll have to remember, little bit not a general type of uh, words that you have been talking about, but vitamin C is a common term. Can you name two or three? Food sources, vitamin C, every day that you must be consuming also. Lemon, the cypress fruits. These are the sources of vitamin C. Why should we consume adequate amount of the vitamin C? Healthy skin and gums, and also for immunity, healthy skin and gums also. And if healthy skin and gums does not exist in our body, especially gums, now if I have to talk, especially relating to your uh, syllabus, then we are talking about a disease or a disease condition known as scurvy. Scurvy, I'm going to add a word. Scurvy. So what is scurvy? Little bit of, little bit harshly, if you brush, the uh, gums start bleeding, and at all conditions, the gums are swollen. So that be a normal condition? No, that's not a normal condition. The gum should be tightly attached with our teeth. The gum should appear pinkish and should be tightly attached with our teeth. If it is not, then it's a case of profuse deficiency of vitamin C. But as
as comparatively, now that we were talking about Bernays and Emia, we were talking about Pallegra, we were talking about Xerox Calcia, we were talking about Mike Flanders. These are more serious a condition as compared to scurvy because this can be quite a large number of times retrieved by simple nutrient intake. Then when we are talking about water, how much of the water should we drink in a day? How, how much? My God, seven to eight glasses, not liters. You're giving me little words like that. So when we are talking about seven to eight glasses, roughly around two liters, roughly around two liters, two to two and a half liters, not more than that. Why is water necessary actually in our body? Two or three functions to understand. Why is water necessary in our body to maintain the fluidity of the blood? If we don't drink water in adequate amount, say suppose a person drinks only two glasses of water, is it sufficient? No. Why not? Because number one, the blood is becoming thick. If the blood is thick, is the blood reaching every tissue at the right time? No, the process of circulation has become slow. And uh, next is what? When we are talking about that if the process of circulation is slower, uh, the tissues are not getting oxygen, so energy release from the tissues is also much lesser. Secondly, if I also understand that the intake of water is less, can the excretion of the waste substances happen in an adequate amount? No, because water is the medium where the waste get dissolved and carry it to the kidneys. So water is acting as a medium to carry all the waste to the surfaces of excretion. Water is also helping in the process of digestion. When you don't take adequate amount of water, the enzymes are not getting soluble. The enzymes are not getting diluted and they are not allowing to spread over the food masses in our stomach. In this time, digestion will not be there. Stomach, I'm sorry, water also helps to maintain our body temperature. So water has got a whole lot of functions. Water helps in digestion, body temperature, fluidity of the blood, etc. etc. At least some few. Uh, functions of the water you are supposed to remember. Next is when we are talking about balanced diet. What do you understand? What is the typical definition of the word balanced diet? An adequate amount. No, adequate amount of what? Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, minerals, vitamin, rubbish, water. So, adequate amount we should eat. But as just before the break, also we were talking about most of the time we prefer to eat, or most of the time we eat food which is preferably rich in carbohydrate, and then comes uh, quite a number of times fat, and then come protein. But actually, protein should be the maximum amount in our diet, in our meals. Then it should be carbohydrate, and fat should be minimum. But at the same time, there's a myth that we should not consume fats. Is that correct? Should we consume fats every day or we should not? We should. We should. Why not? Why should we consume fats every day in a small, limited amount? Because some fats are very like Ah, so fat the basic function can help in our body. What's the major function? Store heat. Store heat. Apart from that, you're always pushing for organs. Pushing for organs. So and? And? And for protein. And I'm still looking for one more point that also you all also have learned. The excess amount of fat gets deposited in the form of which type of tissue? Adipose tissues. In the form of adipose tissues. So if our adipose tissue in our body, then what will happen? We will always feel cold. Because the adipose tissues always preventing the loss of body heat. This is the adipose tissue. Insulator. The adipose tissue always act as an insulator. Adequate amount of fat and every day we should take so that these fat get deposited in the layer of our skin, not allow the body heat get uh, lost. So if body heat is not lost, then only we'll be able to maintain our body temperature. Last we talk about the importance of cellulose. And at the start, we were already talking about no, we, we cannot digest cellulose. Now the question is that if we cannot digest cellulose, then why should we? Why should we consume green leaves? Why should we consume fruit? Why should we consume so much of crops and vegetables? Because they have 
every particular crop, the apples that we are talking about, uh, every particular fruit now that we are talking about, every particular crop that we are talking about, vegetable, they have a whole lot of fiber in it. And this fiber called roughage. This roughage helps in the most important function that is always right. Roughage helps in absorption of water in the intestine. Absorption of water in the intestine so that the release of the waste substances can happen. So that the process of release of base substances can happen. So you're always asked this for one mark. What is the function, significance of cellulose? Tax as a roughage so that the absorption of water can happen in the intestine. Okay, so we have just hurried through this chapter. We have just covered up. There may be some more doubts, confusion. So if possible, you may just clarify this for again. Thank you.